AMD is not quite ready with their GPU launch. The Nintendo Switch 2 gets unveiled and Intel's doing the right thing with their GPUs. Why can't everybody else do this? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, January 2nd, 2025. Yes, I said that name right. Expect me to constantly call it 2024 for the rest of the month, but I at least did it right this first time. You're welcome. But before we jump into the news, I want to remind you that we do have the giveaway going on over on our Twitch channel for a 14900KF RTX 4090 PC. You can go check us out over on twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech to get the details on how to enter into that. But it turns out that we're not going to be giving away a lot of AMD GPUs anytime soon because they're not going to be available quite about the time that AMD is expected to announce them at CES this coming week. That's This is a lot sooner than I thought it was gonna be. I, I have to go to Vegas soon, oh my goodness. So reports are coming out from board channel partners that AMD is going to have their announcement of the RX 9070 XT at CES, but they're not gonna expect availability to really take place until sometime in February, despite the January launch. This is not anything atypical from what we've seen with AMD's recent launches of things like the 9800X3D. Yes, they did technically launch those, a few months ago, but they've been drips and drabs of stock and it's been hard to have them. The broader availability has been rather difficult and that appears to be the case for the 9070 XT as well. But on top of that, in case you're looking to get a lower end card that's gonna be in a more affordable price range, such as the 9060 or the 9050s, then you're gonna have to wait some time until March or beyond. This is gonna be a more spread out launch by AMD. We're gonna talk about Nvidia's launch cadence towards the end of this episode of Hot News. But in case you're waiting for AMD's next gen GPUs, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because you know, it's that time of year again. No, not the holiday time of the year, the new GPU time of the year. The newest cards are just around the corner. So if you're looking to upgrade to the latest and greatest, you can do it with today's video sponsor, Jawa. If you're a PC person, you probably already know that Jawa is the number one place for buying and selling PC components online. Just a few months ago, they expanded their trading program to include both CPUs and GPUs. Jawa makes the whole process super easy with their instant quote system. Simply enter the model for your CPU and GPU and the condition, then you have your quote. From there, you can either trade in that amount towards an upgrade directly from Jawa, or you can sell it to Jawa and run away with just the money. Either way, Jawa is making sure that you're saving on your next upgrade. But on top of that, Jawa also ensures that whether you're buying from a fellow PC enthusiast or selling to them, all transactions are quick, easy, and most importantly, secure. They've worked hard to ensure that upgrading with them is fast and easy. And be sure to join Java's Discord for tips and advice on what upgrades make sense for you from the vast community of helpful PC enthusiasts. You can check out how much your current hardware is worth with Java's trading program today. You can use the link in the description to get started on your upgrade right now. Also, don't forget to use code UFD10 for 10% off up to $10 with your purchase with Jawa. Thank you to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. And maybe you're gonna get rid of some old hardware with Jawa to justify getting a new console from Nintendo. You're planning to upgrade to the Switch 2? Well, I'm pretty sure Nintendo did not plan to have all of the things about the Switch 2 leaked, including the SOC being pictured with not just the Nvidia chip, but also all the electronics on it, which gives us some fascinating insight into what this handheld console is going to be. We've already seen the screen. It's going to be roughly eight inches. It's going to have very similar handheld controllers to the Switch One, but we also get to see that it will have 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory on the console, which is technically a higher amount of RAM than the Xbox Series S. However, the Xbox uses VRAM where it looks like the Switch is gonna be using LPDDR5X. So it's gonna be using DRAM instead of VRAM. So it's not quite one for one, but we also get to see all the other components that are on the Switch 2. And the reasons we know that the leak of this image is the Switch 2 is because we've already seen this PCB in a mock-up with a console before without all of the electronic components. And this matches up with what we've seen before, but you get the traditional card reader down here. It's going to have USB-C uh, and it appears to be on the Ampere architecture. 256 gigs of storage is what we're expecting. They're supposed to have some announcement sometime in January. It's supposed to launch sometime in March. That's the general idea of what's going to be going on with the Switch 2. I think I've seen the quote that like was supposed to get like PS4, PS4 Pro level performance in a handheld. I, I could believe it with what we're expecting out of Nintendo and Nvidia for this next gen console. And it's just, it's 
kept leaking. We keep getting new details. And uh, if you're driving with Volkswagen, turns out that you're being leaked. 800,000 EV drivers had their data just completely open on the internet for anybody to see. Most specifically, it was geolocation data that was very specific to people and how they drove around, not just Germany, but other parts of Europe and various other parts of the world. It doesn't appear like this is a US centric leak, but it does appear like it's affecting a lot of people, nearly a million EVs, where you could see whether a car was parked at home, it was cruising down the Autobahn, or parked outside of a brothel, according to the reports. And in 466,000 out of the 800,000 cases, the location data was so precise that you could just track the driver's daily routine. Now, this did get reported to Volkswagen as of November 26, even though this was available for quite some time. So it looks like Volkswagen's already taken care of this, but their public response has been a little uh, less than admitting to it with them saying that there is no sensitive information like passwords or payment data affected, so you don't, you don't need to take any action. No sensitive data was exposed, despite people being able to track you in case you didn't want to be tracked, whether that would be, uh, you know, Secret Service intelligence members, which was one of the things that was brought up with this, or potentially, you know, just uh, unhealthy relationships where you're, you're, you're being able to be monitored. It's not great, but hopefully Reese has some great deals for you. On, uh, on some tech products for you to be able to pick up. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy 2025, everyone. Hope you guys had a good and safe celebration and let's jump into the first deals of the new year. Starting off, we have this 8-bit dough retro hot swappable 10 keyless wireless mechanical keyboard. With all of the colorways currently being on sale, but the C64 edition comes with a dual super buttons and super stick for only $79.99, making it $30 off. But then next up, we have the office favorites, the Sony XM4 wireless noise canceling headphones, which are currently going for only $158.40 with the included promo code, making it $189.60 off. And then lastly, we have this Alienware monitor back on sale featuring a 34 inch, 3440 by 1440, 165 Hertz curved QD OLED display going for only $552.49 with the included promo code, making it $347.50 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below, but until next time, and you're back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out that if you're looking to buy a new gaming laptop this coming year, you might get a great deal, maybe not on the price, but on the performance, because more benchmarks are coming out on the RTX 5060 laptop, and according to the Time Spy numbers, it is tremendously fast. It is beating a lot of the previous generation, coming in with a 12,756 score, which when you compare it to everything else is out there, that beats the previous generation RTX 4070 gaming laptops, definitely beats the RTX 4060, and in fact is enough to match an RTX 4060 Thai gaming desktop. So we're about 10% beyond the 4070, about 32% beyond the 4060, 70% beyond the RTX 3060, and again, matching a 4060 Ti with this RTX 5060 laptop GPU. Obviously, as we've talked about in the previous episodes of Hot News with uh, the RTX 50 series, it's gonna come down to pricing and what that's gonna look like, how much are these no Notebook's gonna go for? Are we gonna see them sub $1,000? Is it gonna stay at the price point that you could find an RTX 4060 laptop for? Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, we're just uh, about a week away from finding out all of those details, so stay tuned on that. But we're also expecting to find out more details again on the desktop versions of the RTX 50 series GPUs. But the latest report is that the 5080, while it's going to be announced on Monday, it is going to release on January 21st. So that will be three Tuesdays following this coming Monday, because that you have the 7th and you have the 14th and the 21st. I did that math right. So the 16 gigabyte RTX 5080, <laughs> we'll see what the price things like rumors are not kind, not good, but it's supposed to have really fast VRAM in case that matters to you at all, but you're gonna be able to pick it up in January, not not in a, not in February. So that's like slightly better than AMD's, right? <laughs> but regardless, let's talk about a company that's doing things right on their GPU side. And we have reports coming out that Intel with their current Arc Battle Mage GPUs that are out there are looking to launch a higher VRAM version of the B580, coming in with not just 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is what the current GPU is, but 24 specifically going to be for those professional tasks and anybody who needs the extra VRAM for the workloads that they're doing. Obviously right now that's targeting things like AI, large language, 
language models being able to run those locally on the GPU. But the idea is that they're going to use the B580 GPU and instead of 12 gigabytes, double that amount, give you 24 and then sell that separately, which to me makes a ton of sense. You give the more affordable 12 gigabyte variant that's enough for gamers right now at that $280 price point. And then for anybody who needs more, well, then you just upcharge them for that kind of like Nvidia did with the 4060 Ti giving you 16 gigs, but 24 gigs being a higher amount. And hopefully the pricing is more sensible. It's more aligned to, you know, the cost of 12 gigabytes of VRAM plus Intel's profit margin, right? Not uh, not 100 extra dollars to get uh, eight more gigabytes of VRAM, which is not that, that's, that's a massive profit margin for Nvidia there. But it's just good to see that Intel has a strategy that appears to be customer and consumer centric, at least on the GPU side of things. The Battle Mage launch appears to be going well. I got my first B580 a couple days ago. I'm planning to put it in my system, use it for a month, see how Battle Mage treats me. How am I gonna handle Intel's ARC graphics? I want to know. I'm looking forward to it. And I want to know what you guys had to say on Tuesday's episode of Hot News. We got Alex saying the kidney joke isn't a joke anymore because they're adult knees. That was terrible. I'm sorry. And then we got Coke saying people $1,200 for a 5080 is expensive. NVIDIA leaks fake 1550 price for 5080 people. Wow, 1550 is really expensive. NVIDIA releases 5080 for $1,200 people. $1,200 for a 5080 is not expensive. Well, okay, and I know this is gonna get me into trouble, and I know that people don't like it when I, I point out things like this, but at least it wouldn't be a price increase. The 4080 launched at 1200 bucks, so it's at least not a price increase. It's not good, it's not it's not healthy. It's it's bad for us, but it's, it's at least uh, in line with what the last generation was. So uh, regardless of, uh, you know, it could be 1500 bucks, it's, yeah. And then Darren Teat saying the 3080 was 69% faster for $700 with a silicon shortage. The 4080 was 20% faster for $1,100 without, and it's $1,200. NVIDIA must laugh themselves to sleep. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, but they do. Do you, do you see what that says? They're worth $3 trillion. I just wanna, I wanna put this in perspective for you. When the RTX 40 series dropped in November of, of 2022, they were worth a third of a trillion dollars. And now they are worth over nine, almost 10 times that. Yes, yeah, they are. They are laughing themselves to sleep. They're, they're sleeping, eating good. I think I saw a report that like 75% of Nvidia's employees are now multimillionaires. It's, they're, they're, they're doing just fine. And then we got the angry one saying, I can't say this enough. People need to combat these ridiculous GPU prices with their wallets. It's the only way to respond. That's how the free market works. And I, obviously that that's uh, one of the points that I brought up in Tuesday's episode. Like the, the only way to enact changes for the gl global consumer base to, to make a decision and reject what Nvidia is giving us. And we have seen, we have seen that have success with Nvidia. As much as we wanna, you know, the, the internet wants to crap on Nvidia and their anti-consumer and an, like terrible pricing, they have responded to consumer pressure before. You have things like the RTX 4080 Super being $200 cheaper than the RTX 4080. It's not much, but it's, it's showing that they were willing to give a little bit for that, that GPU. They were willing to drop the price a little bit because it was not selling at 1200 bucks. And then may I remind you that uh, with the RTX 4080, we had the 16 gig and we also had an RTX 4080 12 gig, which once the internet heard about that and memed it to crap and laughed them out about it, they unlaunched that card, the RTX 4080 12 gig uh, came out as the RTX 4070 Ti. Now, it's obviously uh, neither here or there, but they did respond to public pressure. And so if consumers can, uh, you know, just collectively say, hey, <laughs> we've had enough, we don't have that kind of disposable income and the, the, the benefits that NVIDIA was giving us before are just no longer there for the price point that they're trying to charge us. We're gonna switch on over to Intel and AMD. Then yes, that will enact change and we can't do much besides that because uh, as pointed out, NVIDIA is worth a lot more than I think any of us collectively have put together. And we got Gotterby Leggy saying, honestly, the streetlight shirt fits for the 5090 price conversation. A moment of silence, please, for those that never get the chance, which I just, Thank you, Gonnermy Leggies, for noticing my shirt. I, I appreciate everybody who uh, 
gets gets the, you know, a streetlight reference. It's great. And then uh, the, the lyrics continued on in the sub comments. But I just I really appreciated everybody who uh, appreciated my streetlight shirt. And then we'll end it off with Pearl Lichtman saying, I remember back when my dad and I used to spec systems for our house and or donating to our school in the early to mid 90s. Even unadjusted for inflation, they were often costing $3,000 for a system with no 3D GPU. Then prices kept coming down for years. And now NVIDIA is trying to get back up to that price for the GPU alone. It's freaking ridiculous and nobody should be buying new NVIDIA GPUs at that price for gaming. $850 USD max for an 80 class GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, assuming adequate bandwidth, and $1,000 max for anything above that for gaming. Nobody should pay more than that unless they get it for work. I mean, yeah, that's one of the conversations that Jensen has been continuously pushing from his pulpit is that Moore's law is dead. So this expectation that we're gonna have a precipitous decline in prices with an increase in performance is just an idea that he has uh, done away with for the last many years, and it's just continuing to have fruition. But, uh, you know, just to kind of give context to the conversations we're having, right? Like the 1080 Ti launched for 700 bucks back in 2017. That's worth about $900 today. A $900 GPU right now gets you the 4070 Ti. So we're about a full class step down from what NVIDIA was giving us uh, eight years ago. 4070 Ti is tremendously more powerful than a 1080 Ti, so we are getting that increase in performance, but we're not getting, uh, we're not having that that price parity anymore. So yeah, I, I hear that, I see it. And again, uh, just gotta make smart choices as consumers, as a collective. We'll see, we'll see what ends up going on with the RTX 50 series. And we'll see what I, I do tomorrow with hot news. I'll be back for more of that. Uh, see you then.